Hello there everyone and welcome to my channel. It's been a while since I've last uploaded anything here and I have recently rebranded so I'd like to take some time to properly introduce myself and clear some confusions regarding the change. The much needed channel update video is still in progress but it'll be out sooner or later. I'm Narina Nell, an aspiring animator and illustrator. I'm 17 years old and I'm currently a graphic design student in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Some of my longtime subscribers may know me by my previous alias, Nary the Cat Kitten. I used to make Warrior Cats content for almost 6 years and you might remember me from one of my previous works, Life Letters. I'll discuss my previous works some of the time, but for now all you need to know is that I'm in a very experimental phase now. I've been playing Mihoyu's Genshin Impact since 2020 and it's become a huge source of inspiration for me. Lately, I've mostly focused on creating fan content of the game, but I do a lot of original work outside of the fan content, both personal works and projects for art school. I'm creating a variety of content and exploring new techniques and themes, and I plan on documenting that journey here and on other platforms. I hope you'll stick around and come along my artistic journey. Now that all that's out of the way, we can finally get to the topic at hand. Today I'll be sharing with you my thoughts and process behind the creation of my original character. I must, however, disclose that I am making a character based off of my own culture. I was born and raised in Bosnia, and I have worked with traditional clothing and items in the past, and I have researched my country's culture and history as much as I was able to. I am not trying to appropriate any culture in any way, and I have consulted with many individuals inside a field regarding this topic. I am also aware that Sinjinaya is based off of Slavic culture and folk tales. However, I am still unsure of what cultures they'll show in the official game, since all the information thus far has led us to believe they'll only include Russia's cultural aspects. So please keep in mind that this is a personal headcanon of mine, and doesn't necessarily have to be true. Whatever the case may be regarding Sinjinaya and future updates, I am beyond excited to witness it all and play the game. While I am in no way a professional designer nor storyteller, I thought this would serve as a fun challenge for me to push my limits and play around with different ideas while trying to remain true to the original source. This is a fan-made character that won't be associated with Mihoyo in any way and won't be in the official game it is based upon. I am not profiting off of this character and I created this entire project for my own pure enjoyment and that alone. I do not support anyone who claims that this character and anything relating to them will be an official in-game product. Usually when creating characters, I settle for one of two options. First is writing the character's personality and story and designing them later, and the second is creating a design and adding the personality and story afterwards. I tend to go for the first option most of the time, since I believe it's the safer of the two. When you have a fully written character, it's much easier to design them that way, seeing as you're just adding visual elements to your creation and using the design to showcase already known details. I tend to go for the first option most of the time, since I believe it's the safer of the two. When you have a fully written character, it's much easier to design them, seeing as you're just adding a visual element to your creation and using the design to showcase already known details. That way you can match the character's physical appearance with their personality. However, this time I went with the latter option. I decided to create the character design first and write out the story and personality later. This is harder to execute, but the result tends to feel much more natural. I did make my work a lot easier by giving myself a theme. I decided that I wanted to use Bosnian traditional wear as inspiration for the design. Usually, Bosnian clothing has a striking silhouette to it, forming a triangular shape of sorts. The garments are usually made of cotton, silk or velvet, making them very durable. The clothing style varies from each region and the wearer's social status. The usual women's outfit consists of a cotton shirt, a pair of satin harem pants, an open vest on top, a belt or scarf on the waist, and a fez with a woman's scarf laid over it and a pair of sabbaths. However, for a begum, which is a bey's wife, a lady of high status who governs a province, her outfit consists of a robe that's laid over a chemise and cinched at the waist by a belt, often worn with a vest underneath, paired with the usual fez and scarf combo as well as a pair of sabbaths. The traditional clothing is quite colorful, decorated with lots of lace and embroidery as well as all sorts of beading. Sadly, Bosnian traditional clothing is barely worn outside of cultural events like folk dancing, despite the garments all being very stunning and quite fashionable even for today's standards. 
I made a lot of drafts of the design and none of them seemed to really fit that well with the theme that I was going for. First one that I came up with consisted of a rather simple silhouette, a pair of harem pants and a bandaged top. The design was heavily inspired by Yoemiya's official design, but it didn't feel authentic enough. Then I decided to add a vest and a scarf on top. However, it still didn't fit right, especially knowing that Snizhnaya has a harsh cold climate. It's basically begging for pneumonia at this point. So I scrapped that one and tried again. I played around with a few different designs and variations, but none of them really seemed to fit the vibe that I was going for. All of them copied the usual traditional wear, but the shirt and vest combo were specifically made for warmer climates. I tried adding on some jackets, but none fit. Then an idea struck me. Why not just use the Begum robe? I myself have worn both styles of traditional wear, and I remember the Begum robe being much warmer than the usual wear. So I tried that design out. However, we have never seen a playable character in a gown thus far. Only a few ripped skirts. While fighting in a dress is certainly doable, it doesn't really resemble the style that's usually shown in the game. I decided to ditch the chemise, shorten the robe and add harem pants underneath. It made for a pretty cool silhouette and in the attack animations the robe could be flying all over the place while the pants just stayed on. The design created a story element by itself. The character comes from a wealthy family, meaning that she probably dedicates a lot of her time to social events and has some form of connection to the Fatui, or is at least aware of their inner workings. I was looking at all the traditional robes that I could find, and out of all the different color variations, I found a green and red combo most flattering for the design. It would contrast well, especially with the golden accents added, and it would make a very rich yet simple palette. The colors reminded me of the dendro element in the game, which focuses on nature and wisdom. So I decided that the character would be a dendro unit. The belt made a perfect place for the vision to be placed on. It really tied the whole design together. The character could be a bit of a show-off and wanted to place the vision somewhere noticeable. I ended up adding a few other details to the design, including the satin scarves with coins attached to the belt. I decided that instead of the vest being satin, it should be made of leather instead and serve as to not only protect the area but also have the properties of a bra. Added some details to the belt like a whip, a small compass and a utility bag. Underneath the robes are thigh belts with daggers on the sides, just for safety measure. A red fez with golden details and a woven white headscarf over it added more volume and floated the silhouette, and I tried to replicate the worn out look of Rosaria's headpiece. A white lily tied it all together in the end, making it one of the most striking details in the entire design. Lilies are the national flower of Bosnia and are often referenced in art and poetry alike. It also reminds me of Venti, thus I decided to make the character a poet. Bosnia has some of the best poetry out there and it's quite a shame that it's as underrated as it is. I hope that I'll be able to reference some Bosnia literature and folk tales through the character's story. While designing her, I imagined the many possible stories and experiences, everything that might have inspired her and her work. Staying in Snezhnaya seemed torturous at one point, especially since the character was already growing into an adventurous lass with every detail painted on her design. So keeping her stuck in one place felt counterintuitive to me. So making her traveling poet made sense, allowing her to see the world outside of her own. Bit by bit, her character began to form, and so did her will inhibitions. She wants to see the world with her own eyes, to witness all the things that she read about her entire life, and most importantly, she wants to hear every whisper in every poem written and spoken. The task is impossible, but to her it all makes perfect sense somehow, giving herself a challenge she can never complete. This is where I finally decided our previously nameless character's name. I looked through many options and finally settled for a name. Her name shall be Saira, an Arabic name meaning the Traveler. Also quite ironic considering that Saira also means a new star. Seems like a name more fit for the actual main characters of the game. Now that the design has been finalized, it's time for the official character card. One mistake that I must point out is the way that I drew the character without any regard to her element nor the weapon that she wields. 
If someone was to take a look at her finished card, they would wonder if she's a catalyst or even some fancy NPC. Then again, I could use this to my advantage, since there have been characters in the past with similar character cards that had different drawings to be used in their wish art. Replicating the art style was quite challenging, since my own art style is a little bit different. I used to draw in the generic anime style when I was younger, but my style evolved over time since I consumed various forms of animated content with diverse styles. I, of course, had the hardest time drawing the eyes. Genshin has a collection of eye styles that they use in the character models. Some show more emotion while others don't. Some have different streaks of light or patterns while others just remain simple. And they even went as far as to indicate intense drama by the eyes alone. The shading style is quite delicate and soft, tracing the muscles by blurring on bigger and softer areas of the skin. All the shading was achieved by using darker shades of the tone and setting the layer settings to overlay or linear light, then later adding some harsher line over it with a colder or warmer equivalent of the color to add more volume. After spending an awful amount of time on shading, I dimmed out certain parts of the drawing with a greyish blue, then added very thin white line art around overlapping fabric to make certain parts of the outfit pop out. Later, I edited the Snijnayan card using the only existing playable Snijnayan in the game, Child. The card has a Fatui symbol as well as the Harbingers, and we still don't know if the card is just to be used exclusively for Snijnayan characters or just the Fatui as an organization. So, that raises the question, is Syrah a part of the Fatui? Answer? Who knows? And here's a finished product! Quite happy with how it turned out, actually. Despite it having its flaws and not being really a perfect replica, I am still proud of the design. As for the basic information about the character, her name is Syrah, she's a Dendro Archon and... <laughs> Archon. Yes, um, hello, so this is my, my Mary Sue OC, the Dendro Archon, and, and she's hot and, and she's cool. Um, and, and she will make Sama for you, or... Wait, no, no, she's she's a girl boss. She's a girl boss. You'll make the Sama for her. Um, anyways, so... Back to the point. As for the basic information about this character, her name is Syra. She's a dendro archer and a traveling poet. Her signature is Parlance of Lilies, and she comes from Snijaya. She's bold with a good will and a steady head on her shoulders. But she is a creative and a reactive individual. Being a lady of a province, she's always had to meet the high expectations of those around her and set a good example to her peers, but that pressure turned her indignant. So she found escapism in literature and she viewed the library in the capital as her safe space. She meets a traveler in Sumeru and her reactions are slightly hostile towards them after a certain incident and she remains bitter throughout the travels that they share briefly. She tries her absolute hardest to remain neutral and avoid conflict in every scenario, but she isn't afraid of a fight or two on the occasion. She's a skilled archer and wields the element well and holds her family's name through her many victories in battle. Her family and their reputation are her biggest concern of all, but the question is, how far will she go to uphold the reign? She's put off such concerns while enjoying some much-needed time to herself and her craft whilst traveling around the world. Her writing holds cautionary tales and Iliads of the many faces she came across in her travels, wanting to warn others of the dangers that lie in the outside world. She dreams of seeing all seven nations of Tebat, just so she can hear all the whispers among their people. I want to make a second video sometime, expanding more on Syrah and her backstory, and possibly of the original characters. I still have lots to work on, such as her constellation, specialty dish, story, and character relationships. Though I do wonder, should she be a 4-star or a 5-star character? I'll let you guys decide in the comments down below. I hope to make more content with this character in the future. If you do wish to create any fan art using this character, please credit me. I'll make sure to put the pieces in the next video. Thank you all for watching! You can find more of my work on my social media, including fan art pieces, VIPs, animations, crafts and more, all linked down below. See you next time!
see you next time. Alright, that's it. I am leaving. I am just gonna finish my dailies and just go to sleep. That's it. Bye. Mwah.